One of the facts that you're going to have to face as a meditator is there are times when there's progress. There are times when you seem to hit a plateau. Nothing seems to go up or down. And there are times when you have regress. The states of concentration you used to have, you don't have anymore. Or at least you don't have right now. And the important principle is that you don't let the mind get worked up about any of those things. And John Mahabo talks about his early years of practice, where the mind would seem to settle down in ways it hadn't before. He'd get really excited about it, but then it would just deteriorate and get upset. And he began to notice a pattern. It would go up for a while and then go down for a while. And they finally realized he just couldn't let himself get worked up about the ups and the downs and just do the practice, stick to the basics. And he found that he was able to get the mind into concentration more and more consistently. So you have to take the same principle with your own times of regress. It's a normal thing that's going to happen. The mind is a complex phenomenon. You're dealing with lots of different defilements, not just one. And John Lee's image is of the difference between a banana tree growing and an oak tree growing. Banana tree has to grow only in one direction. It does it pretty fast, and then dies pretty fast. The oak tree has to grow in many directions, and you notice how its branches tend to twist around. So it's going to take a long time. Sometimes this branch gets nourished and that other branch doesn't grow for much, and then it starts growing in the other branch and the first branch stops. So given that your mind is complex, it's going to have its ups and downs. It's going to take time. But the basics are, one, think of the Buddha's recommendations to Rahula. The very beginning of his instructions in meditation, make your mind like earth. We tend to forget that. When things are going really well, we get puffed up. When things are going poorly, we get deflated. But notice the earth, it doesn't get puffed up or deflated. You can pour garbage on the earth and it doesn't get upset. You could pour perfume on the earth and it wouldn't get excited about it. It just stays right there. Now, this doesn't mean that you will stay right there all the time, but this becomes the foundation because there's work to be done. The Buddha is not saying simply be passive and just accept whatever comes and don't try to do anything about it. You will have to do something about it, but first you have to have the right attitude, not get upset by what's happening, so you can remember what are the lessons the Buddha taught. And you think about the qualities that the Buddha said are an important part of every practice. Mindfulness, alertness, ardency. So you go back to the basics. Make your mind like earth, and then try to be mindful. And here mindfulness means not remembering everything that happened in the past, but remembering what's useful to remember right now. You may know that story by Borges, where there's a character who cannot forget anything. He has a total memory of everything that's happened in his life, and he's miserable because it's just so overwhelming. Our memory has to be selective. You have to choose what's useful right now. And your memory of how good the meditation used to be is not going to be useful right now. It's like remembering that you had a piece of cake a while back, and it was really good. And wanting to have that same cake all over again. Well, where is the cake now? And even if you didn't eat it then, you had an extra piece of cake left over. If you kept it all this time, it would be moldy right now. So think of your memories of how good the meditation used to be as getting moldy. You don't want to eat moldy food. You remember that if you want the results in the meditation, you have to focus on the causes. So you're mindful of the breath. Each breath coming in, each breath going out. All too often we're too much of a rush to get on to the next step that we don't have the time to watch each breath as it's coming in, watch each breath as it's going out, be right here. And as for the mind's anticipations of what's going to happen next, remember, right anticipation is not part of the path. 
there's a lot of anticipation and craving, but that's not what you're trying to develop. You do have a desire to do the practice, and without that desire you can't practice. But the desire has to be focused on the causes. So be right here as much as you can. That's the alertness part. You watch what you're doing and the results you're getting right now. And you don't worry about the results you had last year or a month ago or whatever. You're focused on what actually is happening right now. And you can make adjustments. Remember when the Buddha talks about breath meditation, it's not just be with whatever breath comes in. There's a time when he was telling the monks to do breath meditation, and one of the monks piped up and said, Well, I do breath meditation. This was a monk who was known to be not that good at the practice. So the Buddha said, Well, what kind of breath meditation do you do? And the monk says, I put aside thoughts of the past, I put aside thoughts of the future, and whatever comes up, I'm equanimous in the present as I breathe in, breathe out. And the Buddha said, Well, there is that kind of breath meditation, but it's not the kind that's going to give you good results. They went into the 16 steps. Remember, what do those involve? You try to be aware of the whole body as you breathe in, breathe out after you've been watching the breath for a while. So you watch it as you maintain a whole body awareness. And then you try to calm the breath. You don't suppress it, just allow it to get more and more gentle as you spread your awareness to fill the body. So when the breath gets really subtle, it's not so subtle that you lose your focus. Your focus becomes the sense of breath energy throughout the body. And you do this in such a way that you try to find what kind of breathing is most pleasant right now. And here again, don't think about how pleasant it was last month. Just which ways of breathing are more pleasant than others right now. They may not seem all that gratifying or special, but find a way of breathing that feels okay. If that's the best you can do, we'll stay with okay breathing. And the more you can stay with it, the more the mind can settle down. This all comes under ardency. You try to do this well. And here again, the ardency has to do with what's actually coming up in the present moment. And if memories of the past are beginning to interfere again, well, remember, that's not something you want to focus on right now. That's an unskillful thought that you try to abandon. The skillful thoughts are the ones that focus on what can I do right now, and I'll take whatever I can do right now as the best I can do and maintain it. And sometimes in the maintaining it's going to get better. You want that cake. Well, you have to cook it. You don't just stick the, the batter in the pan and then put it in the oven and take it out right away and say, geez, it's not going to get cooked as fast as I wanted. So you stick it back in, and then take it out again, stick it back in, take it out again. It's never going to get baked. You just stick it in and let it stay there. The difference, of course, is that when you stick a cake in the, in the oven, you don't have distracting thoughts running around in your head or running around in the oven. Here they may be running around in your head right now, but again, you have the choice. You found yourself, you wanted a quiet room where there's nobody, but the room you have has people populating it. Well, you don't have to get involved in their conversations. This is where mindfulness comes in again. Try to remember what's important to remember right now and what's important to forget right now. Where you pay your attention. Alertness is not all about just whatever is coming up in the present moment. It's focused precisely on what are you doing in the present moment. So the other people in the room may be running around, but what are you doing? There was a time years back when I visited a place in Korea where they were teaching classical Korean music. The year before, I had learned the Korean drum to help a friend who was playing the kayagum. And she had gone back to Korea. I visited her on my way back to Thailand. And so I went to this place where she had taken her lessons. And it was a cacophony. They had these little booths along the walls of the room. And there are people playing different instruments, there are people learning Korean opera. And each person really had to focus on precisely what he or she was doing. And that's the way you've got to focus right now. If there's 
a lot of conversation in your mind. Well, let the other people in the mind carry on the conversation. You're not responsible for it. Just stay right here. So what this means is you've got to get your mindfulness and alertness and ardency well-tuned. Mindful not to keep in mind how good it used to be, but mindful to remember what are the steps, what are the basic steps that are the causes of how it's going to be good. Alertness, what are you doing right now? I'm not focusing on other things that are going on in the mind. And ardency is if memories of the past are getting out in the way, recognize them as unskillful thoughts that you have to let go. So when things are going downhill, remember, you can be saved by the basics, but getting back to know the basics even better. Because you find this happens again and again and again. You have to keep coming back to the basics and re-examining them. Realize that the basics may not be as simple as you thought to begin with. But the reason they're basic is because they uphold everything else. It's simply that as you have more and more experience, you get to know the basics better. And it's in this way that the meditation finally does become a skill. It requires patience, and it requires that quality of making your mind like earth. So you're not upset by whatever happens. You're not excited by whatever happens. You take a matter-of-fact attitude. And then based on that, you go back to your basic skills. And that's how the meditation grows.